In Nier Automata, you play as 2B, a Yoraha battle class android created by the remnants of humanity to defeat alien invaders who have created an infestation of machines on Earth. You're tasked with destroying the machines once and for all to stop a perpetual machine android war so humanity can return to Earth from their sanctuary on the moon. Nier Automata starts with maybe one of the best introduction sequences I've ever played. It showcases all the game mechanics in a very satisfying intro set piece and tutorial. The majority of the game is combat, either on the ground with weapons, in a flight suit in classic shoot 'em up sections, or during hacking segments which take the form of a twin stick shooter. The ground combat has depth, but it's not required to go deep with it. A simple approach is actually more efficient than trying to be stylish. The majority of combat in Nier Automata is fighting hordes of enemies. This means your best course of action is hitting as many things as possible. This results in spamming your fastest and strongest moves against the enemy hordes. You'll also want to be constantly firing with your pod support unit which requires you to hold down R1. Taping down the R1 button on your controller is a totally reasonable solution in Nier Automata. Holding down the R1 for extended periods of time during longer battle sequences can and will cause hand cramps. You can get some cool customization options to help you in combat. If you want to min-max, you can make the decision to remove HUD features for additional space for valuable combat abilities. A good ways into the game you get tired of manually looting enemy drops. Thankfully, right as it starts to become really old, you can buy an auto-loot chip which is a very welcome addition. The most useful combat abilities were by far attack bonuses for melee and ranged attacks and shockwave. Shockwave causes melee strikes to fire a projectile. It allows you to strike airborne and distant enemies with your melee attacks, and in conjunction with your pod support unit, it means you can deal very reasonable damage from a safe distance. You don't really need to stay a safe distance from enemies in most cases, as your dodge is very forgiving. Dodges can be strung together indefinitely, so you can become virtually invincible. There are a few sections where constantly dodging will trivialize a moderately challenging encounter. Most larger enemies will also attack slowly with a lot of telegraphing so it gives you ample time to dodge, and even if you fail, you can just dodge again immediately to avoid any incoming damage. There are a few weapon types in Nier Automata, swords, greatswords, spears, and fist weapons. I found 2B's starting swords, the Virtuous Contract and Virtuous Treaty were the best. They were easy to upgrade, and once fully upgraded, they gain Holy Blessing, which gives you an attack bonus while at full health. There are other weapons to use, but they feel more like flavor than necessary or useful upgrades. You do play as three characters throughout Nier Automata, and they all have some unique quirks. 2B and A2 play largely the same. A2 gets access to a taunt ability, which increases A2's and the taunted enemy's damage output by a significant percentage. Otherwise, they behave identically. 9S is more unique as he's more of a mid-ranged character. Most of his attacks are geared around throwing his weapons and he is better suited to keeping distance from targets. Your runtime with each of the characters is a very rough one-third split. There is a lack of enemy variety in both aesthetics and functionality. You're fighting the same generic robots for the whole game. Occasionally there's flair, like clown costumes or samurai armor, but it's just a coat of paint on the same enemies. It does make sense in the context of the game as you're dealing with mass-produced machines, but it would be nice if there was more variety. A lot of the time, enemies are also not hostile, so you can choose to not attack them and simply move forward. The shoot 'em up sections are in general pretty easy. The addition of melee attacks in these sections allow you to destroy enemy projectiles which can be utilized to completely shut down the enemy's offense. The shoot 'em up sections feel more like a story-driven set piece rather than a meaningful gameplay component. It's a nice deviation from the standard combat, and they tend to be fun, albeit a bit mindless. The hacking sections are a bit heavy-handed and more difficult. I found them to be the least enjoyable parts of Nier Automata and playing as 9S specifically. They're often just too frequent and too long to be really enjoyable for me personally, but people may enjoy breaking up the combat with the hacking segments. The visuals of Nier Automata work very well. There's a lot of seamless transitions from full 3D movement to locked 2D movement. The 2D movement sections often have very striking visuals that are a joy to look at. The cinematic camera movement is quite good, but the camera in battle and specifically lock-on leaves something to be desired. The lock-on feature isn't necessary and is even disabled on the higher difficulties. Lock-on is useful, but it can be cumbersome to actually lock onto targets you want to lock onto. It seems mostly random which targets it selects, which can lead to being forced to just deal with what it locks on or to ignore it completely. The color palette is very muted, to go along with the themes and post-apocalyptic setting. There are fairly regular frame drops and occasional stuttering. It's harder to fault it in Nier Automata than other games as frequently there are tons of enemies and projectiles on screen at a time. It does happen frequently, but doesn't hamper enjoyment too much.
Nier Automata's soundtrack is incredible. It's likely my favorite video game soundtrack from the past few years. The music is all well done and it fits the tones of the areas you're in. Whether it be the comfort of the Resistance camp or Pascal's village, The eerie apprehensiveness when in the theme park area where the machines have given up fighting. What the? Well, this is weird. Or even just the ambient music while running around the world. It's all incredible. Even if you don't play or have any interest in Nier Automata, the soundtrack is worth listening to. The voice acting is also very good. The actors do competent reading of the standard dialogue, but really shine during the more intense and emotional sequences and scenes. There is some questionable content, and there are some very strange events in Nier Automata, but it's part of its charm. The themes are very dark and grim, and frequently strange, but it works well overall. If you can't handle the oddities, or a very depressing game, you should probably avoid Nier Automata. Finally, while Nier Automata is a direct sequel to Nier, you don't need to have played Nier or even Drakengard to enjoy it. There are references and revelations you will get if you're familiar with the series, but it's not necessary to know them going into Nier Automata. Oddly enough, there is a bit of a Catch-22 relationship with Nier and Nier Automata, where playing one will spoil the other. If you want to get into the series, Nier Automata is a great starting point, but be aware you will spoil the original should you choose to play it later on. Nier Automata isn't particularly difficult on the normal difficulty. Most encounters can be beaten quite easily with your standard movesets and very forgiving dodges. You can also have an absolutely massive stockpile of healing items, so if you do get hit, it's unlikely you will lose if you're quick to jump into the menu to heal. There are several buff items which greatly increase your attack and defense, but only last 15 to 30 seconds. These items are so cheap that spamming them is totally viable. The attack ups specifically are just useful for going through the fodder enemies and boss fights more quickly. I got one shotted one time. I was grabbed by a strong enemy as 9S. It was the ending of a rather lengthy sequence of hacking attempts which did force me to completely restart the whole area due to lack of an autosave. In Branch A, you have a mechanic that you have to return to your corpse to get your chipset back. I only had to do it once and it happened during the final boss of Branch A, which did start me immediately back at the beginning of the fight. This is completely removed in Branch C, and dying simply causes you to revert to a previous save. It does feel odd, and inconsistent between branches. Due to the nature of no autosave, it's highly recommended to frequently save. Going as far as to leave an area you've almost completed to save before attempting the final part. The game does tell you to save frequently at the beginning, and it's some good advice. Overall, for my entire runtime of Nier Automata, I only actually died three times. Easy Difficulty provides some exclusive plugin chips such as Auto Fire and Auto Attack, which will make the game a lot easier for casual players. Automatic On is actually impressive as the AI controls surprisingly well. Easy with Automatic On should make the game accessible to virtually everyone, as you have zero need to understand or even participate in the combat, taking the role of a spectator instead. Hard Mode and Very Hard specifically border on Ridiculous. I didn't delve too deep, but the tutorial on Very Hard is very difficult and you will die in a single hit. Near Automata has a unique situation in regards to length. The game is broken down into branches. To get the full story, you'll have to play through various branches to get the main endings listed as A, B, C, D, and E. Individual breakdowns of playtime for the various branches goes as follows. Branch A was 7 hours, 42 minutes, and 33 seconds. Branch B was 5 hours, 42 minutes, and 55 seconds. After completion of Branch C, Chapter Select is unlocked. This is a nice feature for completing side quests and doing other optional content as side quests are split about 80-20 in Branches A and C. Chapter Select was used to skip to the final choice and get endings D and E very easily and quickly after completion of ending C. Branch C, D, and E total times were 7 hours, 25 minutes, and 19 seconds through use of Chapter Select. Completing all the main endings, A through E, 
a few optional endings, a few deaths without saving after a while, and a few side quests, Near Automata was completed in 20 hours, 50 minutes, and 49 seconds. If you wanted to go further and complete all the side quests, it would easily take you 25 plus hours to do so. Near Automata does have 26 endings. Most of the endings are joke endings or quote unquote bad ends that you get for doing specific actions like simply disobeying orders and leaving an area or taking out your mandatory OS chip. They're kind of fun to find as a bonus but don't really affect the story in any meaningful way. The branches aren't all unique and do have some padding. Branch B specifically is an almost one-to-one -one replay of Branch A with a handful of unique moments. It feels drawn out and the revelations of Branch B are mostly glossed over until Branch C rolls around. Branch B and to a lesser extent C feeling like padding is a direct result of the scale of the world and the way the game is structured. The world isn't particularly small but it feels small. The individual areas can feel cramped, especially while traversing them a second and third time in branches B and C. You're constantly in the same areas for the majority of the game's runtime. The ruined city, the forest, the amusement park, the factory, all of them get revisited multiple times. It's a bit unfortunate as the more you go to these same areas, the more you're left wanting something more. The world starts to become lifeless and boring after traversing these areas multiple times. There are a lot of side quests in Nier Automata which unfortunately and unsurprisingly often fall into fetch quest territory. Go to X area and get Y item is the majority of the side quests in Nier Automata. You have some ability to double dip and do the side quests while in the area for the main story but frequently you'll have to return to previous areas to complete the side quests. The side quests will provide more content for those looking for 100% completion. It's almost not worth the time as after Branch C, an NPC unlocks who sells the Nier Automata trophies for in-game currency. This means you can actually plat them the game without doing most of the achievements yourself and just buy them. It's even less grindy if you back up your save using USB or cloud storage to simply get your money back after getting the trophy. Nier Automata's combat is deep, but often feels hectic and simplistic because of the hordes of generic enemies you're put up against. The variety in the ground combat, aerial shoot-em-ups, and twin-stick shooting hacking sections provide nice deviations and keep the game from stagnating. The sound design is incredible. The voice acting is powerful, and Nier Automata has one of the best soundtracks I've heard in recent years. The soundtrack is so good that it's worth listening to regardless of your interest in the game itself. The world can be a bit bland, especially after being forced to traverse the same areas multiple times to get the true endings. Near Automata is worth playing if you're willing to put up with some of its roughness and can stomach a story that deals with some very depressing themes. Near Automata gets recommended playing's most prestigious verdict of... Recommended.